So, let's begin with the very first game. It's a game once again by Kevin. And let's get started. Kevin was playing with the black pieces, just like in the previous, in the first pattern game analysis stream. And we actually see the same opening. It's a Spanish and you like this variation of D6. I believe it's called the Steinitz. Oh no, you're saying it's called the Norwegian and the late Schliemann. Okay, I don't know about that. I thought it was the Steinitz variation. Okay, if this is your preference, I think I said a few words about this last time already, so no need to repeat. Actually, it's, it's kind of interesting. You, you just set up like this and you're very solid. It's, it's interesting. All right, so let's see what, what is happening here. Queen b3. And here in h 6 the, the first small inaccuracy, it's following the standard plan, but white has a surprising tactical resource, which you missed. Um, so yes, even early in the game, you need to watch out for possibilities and calculate early on. And always look for those forced sequences, forced moves, taking moves, checks. Of course, we don't have many checks here, but but um, taking moves and checks and moves that attack something, always gotta check for those. And here the problem is with knight h6 that it runs into d takes e5 and you always wanna take with the f pawn, obviously you never wanna take with the d pawn as it leaves these pawns isolated and weak. But here if the f takes e5, as you also pointed out, Kevin, there's bishop g5 forcing queen d7, bishop f6, this answer big, Bishop takes h6, and now there's this beautiful shot. And of course, it's easy to miss if you're not looking out for it. But if you're looking for taking moves, then this is this is one move that comes to mind. And then Bishop takes h6, the other move. So it's really something about training yourself to just keep going, keep going until you reach the end. There's no more forced move, no more taking move, or no more check to consider, or they're just complete nonsense, and then you stop. And here, well. That just works out for white surprisingly. If bishop takes, bishop takes h6 once again. And if d takes, then rook d1. And there's the idea of rook d8 in the position. And in the end, uh, in this line, white emerges up a pawn. So it's better. So you would need to take back the d pawn. But like I said, it's really not what you want. So yeah, this just comes down to being aware, paying attention early on in the game, and just being alert, right? All right, so rook d1, white missed it, and now, as you're saying, like has reached a solid position. And it's fine, I believe. Queen c4, he played bishop d7. I didn't like this move because I think the bishop is not well placed here. I would have liked queen e8 better. Queen e8, you can prepare bishop e6. Maybe in some lines you can even go to g4 and it feels more natural. Also, you move out of the d file, just feels like the more natural move. Feels more active. Bishop e6 coming next, attacking a queen, just seemed to make a lot more sense to me. All right, bishop d7, but of course, not a tragedy here. Knight b3, and now again, queen e8. Yeah, you play queen b8, um, and there you miss this tactical idea that he's playing, which is taking away the bishop pair from you. So, I mean, queen b8 in general, uh, I think it's valid to put the queen maybe on b6, but even then, it doesn't feel perfect because white could play bishop e3. So, in general, yeah, I, I believe the queen should go somewhere to the king side, queen e8, and then maybe in the future, who knows? Maybe you can play with f5 at some point, who knows. But yeah, this queen b8, I mean, even if this tactical shot didn't work, well, shot goes too far, but even if it doesn't work, it still doesn't feel right to me. It feels like the queen should be on the queen side here. Uh, on the king side, excuse me. So this is the problem, knight c5 is possible because the bishop is unprotected on d7. Bishop c8, and now white gets the bishop pair back you could say or splitting black's bishop pair let me just check the chat real quick ah kevin says the opening that's what fritz called it okay i understand 
Yeah, I think it's called a Stein's variation. Fritz is just talking nonsense. <laughs> okay, let's keep going here. Uh, B3, knight D8, this is all fine. It's nice um, regrouping here. And of course, you're fine here as black. It is about equal, I would say. Knight E6, knight is perfectly placed here. And white is doing a good job exchanging this knight right away. Takes, takes, queen e6, also very natural, perfect square for the queen, c4, and here c5 I didn't like that much. Just didn't feel right to me, I mean, it might not be a bad move, but if you don't have to play this move, I wouldn't right now, because you're putting another pawn on the dark squares. Maybe this is what is itching me, that you are putting another pawn on the same color as your bishop, and just play bishop f6 right away. Just bishop f6, you change the bishops, and then go from there. Maybe you can, in the future, let's just say, I don't know, why play some moves. Okay, now playing c5 feels more natural to me, okay? Because now you have the bishops off. Um, and then you can double here and maybe in the future push a little bit and see what happens. I mean, I would, I would prefer black, even though it should be equal. And of course you need to check what happens after c5 but here um, you can play just d5 and uh, oh no excuse me not d5 because then what could take on f6 take on d5 and you would lose a pawn but take on g5 first and then play d5 and black is completely fine which actually brings me back to what happens if white takes an f6 first and then play c5 well then you have this move rook f4 and pick up this pawn so doesn't work for white all right c5 bishop e3 and now yeah you found a very good plan i like this position of play h5 the idea king h7 bishop h6 getting rid of this bishop very nice okay queen g5 queen f6 taking off the queens and a5 stopping b4 okay Fair enough. Yeah, I like this move. And now bishop h6 and bishop f2. And here you're playing rook ba to stop b4. But as you pointed out, this plan of g5, g4 is quite annoying for white. And it seems this plan just didn't occur to you at all uh, because you could also play it, on, uh, play it later on. Um, it is quite a typical plan uh, as kind of a, it's called the minority attack because you have this minority of pawns here and it, you're pushing them forward to create weaknesses where white has the majority of pawns and really unpleasant for white I think um, g4 is just coming no matter what even if h3 and b4 then you can just take and nothing is happening here anyway you're much quicker and the rook is perfectly placed on the a file this is great um, so I think you have nice play here you might even be able to push a little bit even though it should be equal if white plays accurately so I think I'm um, you know best if you acknowledge this at all or not but I think um, that you maybe just it just didn't cross your mind so um, well in the future you can just ask yourself where can i play right you don't have that many uh possibilities here to to play of course a4 would be a move to to open files but well it's the wrong wrong side of the of the position to play um and then well c6 d5 is not an option and then naturally you'll think about the queen side at uh, the king side excuse me and think about g5 g4 or maybe you you try to be too prophylactic i'm not sure um okay let's keep going rook b8 king f1 and this move rook b7 i didn't really understand that much it looks very odd to me again g5 would have been the way to go um yeah, I'm not sure what, maybe you could write in the chat uh, right now what your idea was with B, the rook b7. I mean, if you want to bring the rook back, then I'd rather expect you to play rook b7 right away. 
Um, yeah. So I don't know. Okay, rook b7, bishop e1. Yeah, and rook f8 now. And I mean, this is possible. But if you just play rook a7, nothing is going to happen here either. Of course, white can play b4. But just a bunch of pawns coming off. And um, I'm not sure how much this is really helping white anyway. And of course, you have this plan again if you want to g5, g4. And it's all fine, I think, for you. Or even bishop e3 here also looks very nice. Activating the bishop and really no worries. So rook f8, bishop takes a5. Yeah, and this just seems not necessary, right? And and it seems it was based on a calculation mistake. So you played rook fb8. Now this is a real mistake, uh, as you pointed out as well. Rook a8 was necessary. Um, when after b4, bishop e3, white cannot untangle himself here, and should be just a draw, pretty much, because both sides cannot cannot play on really. Um, but you played rook fb8, which is still okay. It's not a big deal, I think. Well, actually, your opponent also made a mistake. He should play a4 to be able to move the, the bishop after rook a8. He played king e2 when you had a chance again to go rook a8. Um, but yeah, it seems like you either miscalculate or misevaluated this position after takes takes. Uh, this position is just the problem is all your pawns are dropping more or less. Um, and you're pretty much losing. Yeah, so you know best where was the mis where was the problem here? I I'm guessing a miscalculation or misevaluation. So this is something to to look into there. And um, yeah, and here Bishop F8. Yeah, you could have still played Rook A8, or I guess Rook A7 shouldn't really make a big difference. Rook A8 seems more natural. And then keep on fighting and very difficult for white to win this, I believe. Uh, I mean, of course, now you're not getting the bishop to d4, which was nice. But still, still, what is white going to do? I don't think white can do much here. I mean, the only plan I see is to get the king to a4 but even then what are you going to do next <laughs> now black can just st stand like this and no progress to be made so yeah maybe you just didn't uh, pay attention to this possible move rook a8 here and that then white is not able to move Okay, I'm reading your comments now. I fought for long on c5 because I thought I could force the trade of the bishops. Okay, well, you could have forced the trade of the bishops immediately, right? So maybe you were afraid of white's c5. Ah, yeah, king b3. Yeah, that's a good point. King b3 runs even and rook takes a5. That, that's even clearer. Um, Andreas Pohl is asking, why not in German? Well, the game submitted from, I believe, all... Uh, the supporters here are not German speakers, but I will have a live stream in German at some point where I analyze games in German, so this might be coming at some point. Okay, let's get back to the game. Um, yeah, you are overly focused on locking the position down with no risks. Yeah. Yeah, it's difficult to, to avoid all risks in chess. That's just what it is, right? Um, but even... Okay, so you just didn't want to allow b4. Hmm, I see. Okay. All right, let's keep going here. Bishop f8. Okay, now a4. Yeah. And even if you take now, it's still the same story. White will take on c7. Okay, bring the king. 
So now for a while nothing is happening. White is up a pawn, but still not easy to convert, obviously, as the position is rather close. So white has to go b4, now rook a7, and bishop d8, rook a1, so dun 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 dun. All right, c takes b4, bishop takes, and now, I mean, now, why not just stand still again and just wait and see what happens, right? Uh, just play rook a6. Okay, I mean, bishop b6 doesn't hurt. Um, it's all fine, I think. But exactly here why not keep your eyes on the pawn after all right i mean now you have all three pieces attacking the pawn and white has all three pieces defending the pawn um so this seems more natural even though you're saying c5 is possible here okay that that could be i don't okay that, that would need to be checked but then Hmm. Then maybe I'm wondering if it was not just better to to uh, not play this bishop b6 at all. Just play rook a6, and and maybe even maybe even play c5. Lock it down like this, and then bring the king over. And um, be like, okay, what are you doing? I mean, this needs to be checked carefully, obviously. But could be that it's just working for black. Rook b6, rook b7, rook a6. Okay, this is, of course, way too far now, but it's just a different, different idea. And I'm not sure what your plan was with bishop b6. Okay, you can put on c5, but like I said, then you don't keep an eye on the pawn anymore, and that's uh, what's concerning me here for you, because now as white is doing, he can activate the rook. Okay, bishop d4, bishop d2. And now you're saying bishop b6, you missed this move. You could have come back to this idea, right? Uh, you missed this move because of calculation or because you thought white well, could take and um, then play bishop a5 which is a tricky move yeah it's actually pretty cool the ideas of rook b2 then there the rook is running out of squares but you can play king d7 here with the threat king c8 and if now b7 then rook b2 and suddenly black is winning as you pointed out here in the comments um yeah so this is clearly just a calculation problem here i'm not sure if you were in time travel or anything like that could also play into it but yeah definitely bishop b6 would be the way to go to attack this pawn again on a5 so you played rook 6 a7 rook a3 bishop c5 rook a b3 and you're saying here with the rooks gain in the position where b7 or b8 both players low on time white did manage to win so you didn't include the rest of the game but i think here might be another point i don't know what you played here but maybe go rook takes a5 after all and see how white is going to win this i don't think it's going to be easy for him honestly uh, as the bishop is very well placed your king is safe for now his king doesn't have any safe spot so you can always bother him with the rooks of course you not you don't exchange rooks and still of course technical difficulties not not a clean or not an easy win for white here in any way so i don't know if you, what you played but this is maybe a good very good practical chance here to try all right thanks for submitting the game um i think there were no grave mistakes really um it was just more like a gradual thing um, 
in the end game where first you miss this opportunity to play on the queens on the king side with g5 g4 and then you miscalculate and then for some reason yeah there was you missed this idea of rook a8 and that you just can't move so i think it comes down to to looking at all the options for one with g5 and also with for the other with rook a8 and that's something really we all need to work on as candid moves and we talked about this a little bit the last time as well what i recommend there is to solve studies because they really fo force you to look for unusual moves or to look for all moves in the position and that's a great way to train that um apart from that yeah i mean minor things like i said in the opening uh, minor things I, I found a little bit odd um bishop d7 queen b8 just feels a little bit wrong to me of course not not a big deal um but that's just what i noticed all right let me check the chat uh what else you said oh time travel didn't record it didn't record okay all right yeah so let's move on to the next game 